to understand volcanism, you have to understand the process that caused it. Volcanism is the rising of magma towards the surface, where it eventually becomes called lava, as we talked about in the previous videos. That is driven mostly by the forces of gravity, which will cause compression, which then causes the heating of the layers of the Earth, which will then rise because of differences in density, using fissures on the surface of the Earth. And basically, then you have these major things actually driving the process of volcanism. First, the fact that the material inside is hot makes it less dense and more likely to rise. Also, the fact that it's under pressure also is going to put pressure from the inside for this thing to get out. Also, uh, because the crust is full of cracks or fissures, magma can use those fissures to reach the surface easier and faster and melt through the points which are weaker in the crust. And so volcanism depends on the heat of the earth, the pressure of the inner layers, the density differences which are created by the heating of the magma, and the fissures which are already around because of tectonic plate motions, deformations of the crust, and other processes which we discussed in previous videos. But a volcano would be any event where the magma actually reaches the surface, one way or another. And we already talked about some of the major areas which will see these events. And these are the areas that we called volcano hazard zones, kind of like the earthquake hazard zones. And they will be basically convergent boundaries, hot spots, and divergent boundaries. Let's talk about a little more about each one of those things. So volcanoes come in all lots and different shapes and sizes. And we're going to be talking more about the structure of the volcano in a future video. But where will we find these things? First, convergent boundaries. Now every time one plate subducts underneath the other plate, like we already talked about, the plates will tend to melt, especially if they're wet because of the oceanic plate that's actually sinking below wetting the continental crust and the stratosphere, making it easier for it to melt, kind of tipping the point of the pressure versus temperature that we talked about by lowering the onset of melting by making it wetter. Now this hot, now melted rock, which is less dense, will start to rise and encounter rock and it'll make it easier for it to rise and end the way up, it would actually melt the rock around it and then incorporate the elements from that rock in it as well which means that the magma plume will be different if it goes through different materials. And so since an ocean versus ocean collision, for example, is different from an ocean versus continent collision, you would expect a different kind of magma to form in an ocean versus continent collision than you would have in an ocean versus ocean collision. So island arc volcanoes or volcanoes which form islands because of ocean versus ocean collisions are going to have magma plumes that pretty much went through oceanic crust. And so the materials which are in that magma are going to be oceanic crust-like. While the materials that went through the quantum versus ocean collision are, have, are going to have more silicate-rich materials because they're going to be part of the continental crust. And that's going to become very important when we talk about the types of lava and why the volcanic eruptions are different depending on the type of lava they are. Also notice that contra versus contra collisions do not really create the situations that you need to produce magma. They do have subduction zones like the other ones, but they don't have a trench. They don't have the ocean actually forming. Another big difference is that the mountain ranges formed during contra versus contra collision are very massive and harder to punch through because they get so tall. It won't create as many volcanic fissures and magma plumes that as you would get in a subducting plate which involves the any kind of trench or oceanic crust sinking underneath which wets the continental lithosphere and a stenosphere. So in this map you will see several of those conversion boundaries that we discussed. Everything that I am now tracing is actually areas where volcano activity is actually happening because of conversion boundaries or boundaries where you have convergent pressure happen happening. And so most of the volcanoes on the world are actually caused by this, including the large ring of fire that extends around the Pacific Ocean. And in addition to this, you also have volcanoes forming in areas that we call hot spots. And we do have a separate video, which is part of the plate tectonics lecture series, where I explain what hot spots are. But they're basically rising hot magma plumes, which we call the magma plume theory for hot spots is basically the idea that hot spots are caused by areas of intense magma activity rising to the surface, which will punch through weak spots in the crust and create new islands. And you see examples of hot spot islands here. And you see that they will also create chains of islands. Why? Because the 
the hot spots will actually travel or move from the position because of what we call hot spot translocation, which has to do with the plate tectonic motion. Since the Pacific plate, for example, is traveling or being or being subducting at some point, this whole chain is moving away from the hot spot. And so the islands which of Hawaii, for example, which are further from the actual hot spot, are now eroded and smaller than they used to be because at first they were when they were in the hot spot they were as big as Hawaii is right now but Hawaii is already starting to shift away from the hot spot and new islands are forming behind it if you actually go up, up after Kauai you actually see seamounts and the continuation of the that island chain and in fact the island chain continues all the way north to become the Empress Seamount chain and this is all happening because those islands were eventually, at some point in history, all the way back down here where the actual hotspot is, where the magma plume is. So the idea is the magma plume is pretty much staying in the same place, but because mental convection is dragging the place sideways, the hotspot is constantly puncturing through new islands through the crust and creating new seamounts and new islands eventually. And that explains what's happening there. A uh, different theory, by the way, says that hotspots are sometimes associated with the rifting. And there, there are evidence of a different kind of a mental plume. We discussed this on the previous video. That sometimes mental plumes are more, not more convergent in nature, but more like spreading out in nature. And this is causes rifting. An example of a hotspot like that will be the hotspot that you will see in Africa because of perhaps an indication of a new rift that's actually taking place. And so some of the most common hotspots in the world will be, for example, the Hawaiian hotspot is very famous in the middle of the Pacific. There is also a large random hotspot in the middle of the North American plate. Now this could happen. It's rare because the continental crust is much thicker than the ocean crust, so it's easier for mental plumes to crack to ocean crust than continental crust. But Underneath the Yellowstone Park, there's a large volcanic hotspot which builds a ginormous magma chamber that's the size of the entire park. In fact, when you see these mountains at the corners of the horizon there, what you're actually seeing is the edge of the volcano. The whole park, if you look around it, will have a mountain range. And that's pretty much the caldera of the volcano that you're sitting on. So the, the large lake at the middle of the Yellowstone Park is there because it was part of the crater that was formed since the last explosion. And it's actually very important because the Yellowstone Park tends to explode every 300,000 to 500,000 million years. And it's been a while since they've done it. It's actually overdue. And a volcano of that magnitude we call a super volcano. And when that volcano blows up, there will be no United States left to speak of. Three states will be erased from the map and states around it will be covered with ash and pyroclastic flow and the destruction will ensue all over North America because the ash cloud will pretty much cover the extension of the entire North American expanse and perhaps even cause global blockage of sunlight because of that massive eruption. We're talking about a super massive eruption of this kind that, that caused the, the destruction of a lot of life during the Permian period. This has happened and are routinely over the last million years or so but it hasn't happened in a very very long time so Yellowstone Park is overdue for a supermassive explosion and that's another one another examples of hot spots are hot spots which are randomly around in the middle of the oceans and to see that let's look, let's look at the map of the volcanoes again and you see some random hot spots like this ones all over the world these are locations which are not necessarily in in boundaries and you see that right there, by the way, the Hawaiian hotspot. And I'm going to circle that in green so it's uh, highlighted. And the Yellowstone hotspot will be something like these. And you also have hot, similar hotspots in Asia. And you also have hotspots like that in the middle of Africa as well. And you see how many you have here in, uh, in um, I'm going to circle that in yellow, how many you have in Africa. And those are what we call the rifting hotspots or the idea of the rifting hotspot theory, is, which is the magma plume is underneath Africa, rising in a divergent form, causing uh, Africa to crack, and a new divergent boundary is forming. And what you see with that, it's actual, uh, actual lots of volcanoes around the area, which is an evidence of a new rift that's actually forming. So there's two different theories for a formation of hotspots. One is the magma plume theory, and the other one is the rifting hotspot theory. 
and both tend to translocate because of plate tectonic motion as well. And remember, we talked about Hawaii, the mid ocean, mid Atlantic hotspots, which I circled, and random sea mounts all over the oceans of the world, and rift hotspots as well. And the other place that you will find volcanoes is going to be divergent boundaries. At divergent boundaries, most people tend not to qualify them as a volcanoes, but I actually think of it as, as a, basically a ginormous volcano, one large fissure on the surface of the earth where magma seeps through. That's definitely volcanism of one sort or another. Even though it's not the typical volcanic mount that you would expect from a hotspot or a volcanic mountain that happens when the on the convergent boundary when you have an island chain or a volcanic mountain ranges but still what you have here is magma seeping through the surface and because of a rift and you see that happening in the African rift but you also see it happening in mid-ocean ridges around the world especially for example in Iceland which is such a ginormous igneous province caused by a hot spot or a divergent boundary which actually there's a crack midway through that island and in the entire island it's basically the one ginormous volcanic mountain and you that's actually rifting in half you see here a rift valley that's happening between the mountains and there's a lot of volcanoes in iceland because of this and so divergent volcanic fissures are basically a one continuous line of volcanoes in the middle of an ocean and this will also be happening because of those same magma plume that we talked about before, those, those rifting hotspots. But it's at that point that it's actually evolved to the point that actually has actually spread the continent, and what you have is an open crack at the surface of the earth. So I think we, we think that eventually Africa will become another one of these, uh, just like it happened in the already between the Arabian Peninsula and Africa, and also between the India and Africa. Divergent boundaries will all be examples of this and they will cause volcanic mountains as well. So you see here a tracing of all the locations of the divergent boundaries around the world. And don't forget that you also have the formation of a new divergent boundary over here in Africa, which is cracking it in half. But these divergent boundaries are making those oceans larger, and you're gonna have volcanic fissures which started from that rifting hotspot theory idea, and now they look like we see uh, in the, in the mid-ocean ridges. All of these volcanic activity will create mountains all over the world. And we refer to this when we talk about deformations of the crust or the idea that volcanoes will create mountains. For example, the hot spots all over the world will create sea mounts, such as the ones you see in here. These are islands which are associated with areas of intense activity that you see in the bottom map there. And you see the island chains and formations of mountains like you see here. All of this volcanic activity will also lead to the formation of, of mountains all over the world. In fact, we talked about this the deformation of the cross video, that how volcanoes actually create deformations or, or uplift in the surface of the earth. One example of such things is sea mounts and hotspot islands, which are caused by volcanoes. As you see in the map, all these places around the world are places where hotspots create mountains such as the ones you see in the picture and large island chains like we've talked about before. In addition to hotspot volcanoes you also have seamounts which are locations around the world where the oceans are perforated with these little magma incursions and you see that sometimes it even reaches the surface to form islands as well. Another type of deformation cause will be ridges and ridges of course will form along the mid-ocean ridges or any divergent boundary around the world. Iceland is an extreme example of that where it actually ridges so much and is so intense that it actually is above sea level. But if you actually raise the ocean, you will see it actually looks like a series of deformations caused by that volcanism. You also have mountains associated with the ring of fire or the volcanism around the, the convergent boundaries of the Pacific Ocean. And these boundaries will make several types of volcanoes, including island arcs, such as the islands of Japan, New Zealand, and even the islands of the Caribbean, such as Cuba, Haiti, Dominican Republic, San Juan, and all the islands of the Bahamas, are also part of a large island chain system caused by a convergence in the middle of the, uh, that ocean. And so these are also examples of volcanic island arcs. And you also have folding happening with continent versus ocean collisions where large volcanoes will form in the continent side because of those collisions like we've seen in several pictures before. You also have large magma incursions which includes dome mountains and plateaus forming 
all over the place, including the middle of the contents because of increased buoyancy because of a magma activity. And finally, several different kinds of volcanic mountains, which includes composite volcanoes, cinder cones, and uh, shield volcanoes, which we will talk about, and also island volcanoes. And so there are a lot of different kinds of deformations of the crust associated with this volcanism.